Welcome to Filled with His Love, Strengthening Attachment Relationships. Today I want to talk a little bit about that scripture that occurs both in 1 Corinthians and in Moroni 7, where it starts out, and charity suffereth long. I've always wondered myself, what exactly does that mean, charity suffereth long? So if you look up the word suffereth, or suffer, or suffered, it means patient in the presence of pain, to endure something patiently, or to submit to something patiently that comes. So, so patience is a big part of this suffering thing, but also pain is. So we'll keep that in mind. Now, here is a definition from Love 2.0. This is a book by Dr. Fredrickson, a psychologist, but I want to show you how similar her beliefs are to actually what we read in the scriptures. She says, love isn't simply one of the many positive emotions that sweep through you from time to time. It's bigger than joy, amusement, gratitude, or hope. It has special status. I call it our supreme emotion. Whereas all positive emotions provide benefits, the benefits of love run far deeper, perhaps exponentially so. Love is our supreme emotion that makes us come most fully alive and feel most fully human. It is perhaps the most essential emotion experience for thriving and health. Now just keep that in mind when she talks about it as the supreme emotion, the emotion above all other emotions. As we read, in Moroni 7, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, if ye have not charity, ye are nothing, for charity never faileth. Wherefore, cleave unto charity, which is the greatest of all. In other words, he's saying, over all the other emotions, all the other things we feel, it is the supreme emotion. It is the greatest of all. And we must make sure that we understand the difference between what he's talking about and what uh, Dr. Fredrickson, a psychologist, is talking about. She's really referring to love as we think about it oftentimes uh, in the secular sense. Morona is talking about it as the love that Christ exemplified when he was on the earth. So without this kind of love, he's saying that we can't really feel human. If, we're, if we don't have charity, we're really nothing. We may as well, in one sense, we might as well not exist. Charity or the pure love of Christ is it. It is the thing that is most important in mortality. So I thought I'd just take several little examples of how we have to have love uh, that suffereth long. Certainly with addiction, the pain that comes from addiction, we have to have love that suffereth long. Uh, my brother recently, when he found out that he uh, had type 2 diabetes, his doctor recommended that he give up his drinking of Coke. I asked him how he was coming along with getting rid of that addiction. It had been a very difficult thing. Years, years and years had gone by with that addiction. And he said, I gave it up totally, 100%. He gave it up all of a sudden, cold turkey, and has never come back to it. Now this is maybe almost a year since this has happened. So one definition of suffereth is to be acted upon. Addictions certainly act upon us. In other words, we kind of lose our ability to act and give up that ability to some other substance or some other person. So physical pain, I think of my dad who suffered from Parkinson's disease for 22 years. One day I was up to his home and he was getting dressed so we could go to the bank for a moment. And he was trying to get on his shoes. When you have Parkinson's disease, oftentimes your foot becomes rigid and it's hard to get it in the shoe. He was struggling and so I looked at him. I said, Dad, would you like some health help getting on that shoe? And uh, he looked back at me and in his typical dry sense of humor, he said, only if you want me to get it on. And so, I helped him on with it, and away we went. He suffered, as I say, for decades with this disease, but I really didn't hear him complain, and that's what he suffered long in patience, in love, in a sense, 
with a physical disease. Emotional pain, I have a close friend who has bipolar disease. I've watched him year after year deal with this very difficult emotional illness. And now, even after many difficult times that he's had, he is coming to grips with this emotional illness. He is suffering long his emotional pain. Separation and loss, of course. I, when I was a teenager, I came home one day, I think I was about 15, 16 years old, and I walked in the house and I heard screaming, which I never heard in my own home. And it was my aunt who was screaming about the death of her husband, my uncle. He passed away at, I think, the age of 58, very unexpectedly. Uh, he was up changing a light bulb, reaching up high to the ceiling and fell off the chair and had a massive heart attack and died instantly. His wife, my aunt, was not a member of the church at the time and she barely could tolerate, could just couldn't take this death. Uh, and she was screaming uncontrollably and my mother was trying to comfort her. As time went by, my aunt eventually joined the church and a wonderful man met her and married her and played the role of my uncle as she was sealed to my uncle because that's what she wanted, that's the person she wanted to be sealed to. He, the second marriage, he had already been sealed to a wife and so she was very happy. Somehow she suffered long in love. Personal weaknesses can be a source of pain as well. We look at ourselves sometimes and we think, if I just didn't have that weakness. I watched a young man in a mission field who had great difficulty talking to strangers. He had great difficulty talking to almost anyone uh, when I interviewed him at the beginning of his mission, he said, I, I've never talked with anyone outside my own home. And I said, well, certainly you've talked to friends. That, he said, I have no friends. And then it got worse. <laughs> I said, well, you've, you've talked to teachers. And he said, no, I, the teachers know not to call on me at school because they know I won't say anything. So he, he had a difficulty called selective mutism, and he overcame that in the mission field to the point that no one knew he suffered from this weakness. And weakness truly did become his strength. He suffered in love. Sometimes we have pain because we feel like we've been misunderstood. We had a young man when we lived in New York who was severely hearing impaired, but he also had some cerebral palsy. He got called on a mission and I was talking with him one day and he said, I'm so worried about how people are going to react to me when I knock on their door if, if, if it's a stranger. And I said, you mean because of your deafness? And he said, no, I'm, I'm not really concerned about that. I think they can understand deafness, but it's my hands, the way they shake my cerebral palsy. I, I think that's gonna be a put off for people and it's going to turn people away from me and so I won't be an effective missionary. I had to encourage him and console him and reassure him that he could actually do this and that people would not judge him because of a physical uh, deficiency that he had of cerebral palsy. So people worry about being misunderstood by others. So we love suffereth long. Sometimes we have pain because we feel like we have to wait too long for something to happen and it just is not happening. Grief is one of those things. Grief always takes too long. Grief stays with us for so long. It, it is in the end an expression of our love for the person who is departed, but it's so painful, so much suffering comes in grief. There's a song that I really like by Mark Masri, and the words go like this. Time is too slow for those who wait 
Time is too swift for those who fear. Time is too long for those who grieve. But for those who love, for those who are loved, time is eternity. For those who are loved, like you, love me. So time can be painful at moments when things do not happen as we would hope they would. It's also hard to watch a loved one suffer. I remember my aunt who had back trouble toward the end of her life, and this was for years she suffered. It wasn't just chronic moderate pain. It was chronic severe pain. It was just so difficult to watch her. They tried all kinds of things to relieve her pain, and it just didn't happen. She suffered long in love with that pain. When I was a missionary, I remember studying the languages. I had to learn French and Tahitian both at the same time. I'd had some French, but of course I'd never, take any, I'd never taken any courses in Tahitian, and it was difficult uh, learning two languages at the same time, and I would go out from my apartment after a long study, and I felt like I couldn't understand anybody saying anything. There is a great pain in not understanding someone else. This is one example, but sometimes we can't understand our spouse and their emotional reaction to something. We can't understand a leader and why he would say something or she would say something that they said. This is the pain of not being able to understand. And so we suffer along in love. I one time attended a conference at BYU on C.S. Lewis, and they invited Elder Neil A. Maxwell to be the main speaker. It was a wonderful conference, and at the end of the conference, the one conducting mentioned to the audience, uh, he said, now, Elder Maxwell, I know that you would perhaps like to shake his hand and greet him, but as you all know, he is suffering from cancer right now himself, and he has made commitments to give blessings to others in our locality here who are also suffering from cancer. So he would appreciate it if he could exit rather quickly after the meeting without greeting people here. I sat there thinking, here he is, this man who is a member of the Quorum of the Twelve, suffering with leukemia. And what is on his mind? What is his desire? To bless others who are suffering as he is suffering. And so he wrote this book called Enduring It Well. We don't just endure. There's this notion in suffering of enduring. We endure with love. He could have said endure with love, endure it well, endure life loving God and loving others. What a great example he was to me of that quality of human being. I hope that this coming week you will let love take away some kind of pain that you have, either a pain from weakness, a pain from not understanding or not being understood, a pain from physical illness or mental illness or whatever your challenge might be in life. My prayer is that you will be able to endure it well, endure it with love, because love suffereth long. In Jesus' name, amen.